Whether it's a dog, cat, rabbit, hamster, goldfish, or lizard, most families in the United States include an animal. However, what many people don't realize is that a large portion of the products that we use on a daily basis, from cosmetics to cleaning supplies, they're tested on the same animals that we love as pets. Although animal testing has helped to create a small number of valuable advances in the medical world, such as the creation of the first vaccines by Louis Pasteur, the discoveries have been relatively sparse and have come at a high cost to the innocent test subjects. Experimentation on animals, also known as vivisection, dates back to the 17th century. During this time period, many believed that animals could not reason, therefore couldn't feel pain. The practice of testing cosmetic products on animals was first put into practice in 1933, after a woman who used mascara went blind and eventually died because the product wasn't safe for use. The woman's death resulted in the Food and Drug Administration, passing the Federal Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act in 1938. The purpose of this act was to protect the general population from products that were unsafe for human consumption or use. However, this act led to cruelly testing products on animals before they were released to the public because it was cheaper than testing products on voluntary human test subjects. Many large companies have used animal testing in the past and some still do today. Many of these companies test on animals to reduce the cost of their products and therefore increase their profits and potential sales. Animals are not humans. In spite of the close relationship, people and animals differ from each other. They have different metabolisms and show different reactions to different substances. The painkiller paracetamol works okay with people, but is poison for cats. Arsenic, which is poisonous for people, does no harm to sheep. Substances like varnishes, dyes, silicon, industrial lubricants, or fuels are pumped into the stomachs of rats for months. Yet there is little evidence of the effects these substances might have on people. The supposed comparability has long been refuted. Yet again and again, new animal experiments are being conducted in the same way. Animals do not suffer from diseases of civilization or man's unhealthy lifestyle. So consequently, each tested animal must be first made sick. Diabetes in animals is caused by destroying the cells of the pancreas with poison. Heart attacks are caused by constriction of coronary arteries. Arterial sclerosis is caused by sending electric impulses through the arteries. The guts of mice are perforated to trigger a painful peritonitis with sepsis. In addition, there are animals who are being bred in a way that they suffer from certain diseases or conditions, or serve as a stock of spare organ parts. But an imitation of symptoms has nothing to do with human diseases or their courses. The treatment of those animals who have been sickened artificially can be successful, but it does not mean that treatment actually helps with humans even if it previously worked in a million mites with cancer. Medicines that were successful in animal experiments fail in more than 90% of later clinical trials on people because they either do not work or they have too many side effects. Experiments that concern the mind and personal feelings are particularly absurd. Animals can't talk, yet often by using painful measures they are made to react in a way that's claimed to be a symptom of a certain mental illness. For example, rats are subjected to electric shocks to make them feel desperate in order to study depression. These assumptions that cannot be founded on anything often have outcomes that are completely contradictory. Researchers then cheerfully conclude that they need more tests of the same pattern to get to the bottom of these contradictions. Often the so-called results are completely trivial. Hamsters are killed during hibernation to prove that the period of rest saves the nerve tissues from Alzheimer's. Alcohol is injected into the abdomen of baby rats and later they undergo behavioral tests. The conclusion is that alcohol is not good for children and young people. Guinea pigs have to endure noise trauma in order to prove that noise causes hearing impairment. Currently, no researcher has to justify him or herself for inflicting pain on animals. His or her studies are only evaluated by being published in scientific journals and by obtaining further research funds. The approving authorities only check the compliance of formalities, but not whether the approach of research makes sense. 
In addition, the whole branch of industry profits from breeding animals for testing purposes, from keeping them in cages to discarding them in the end. All of this is defended with an alleged benefit for mankind, even when the only aim is making profit. Animal experimentation is bad science. We want good science. Good science consists of three things. First of all, it must be species specific. Second, it must do no harm. That means you can't use healthy volunteers. Third, any research needs to be based in evidence. That means there is hard scientific evidence to show that this treatment actually works. Is animal testing ever justified? I believe that animal testing is justified for the improvement of medicines and treatments. Why is it acceptable to allow one animal to suffer so that we can live? Why is our health um, any more important than the animals? Suffering is justified for the greater good. Well, the logic of that argument is, is that we should then experiment on humans because humans should be sacrificed for the greater good. I do accept that there is certainly going to be at some level of discomfort to animals. Most of the things that people die prematurely of are things we can already treat and already cure. Children die for the want of mosquito nets that cost three or four pounds that would prevent them from suffering malaria. But as a society, we're actually, in a sense, we turn away from that. We're not doing all we can to stop human suffering. And yet somehow we're saying we have a moral obligation to inflict suffering on others, on animals. The animals that are used for preclinical trials, that means so that you and I don't ever have to enter a trial on it because when clinical trials are made on human beings, there's a chance that they even could suffer, but there's a much less yeah, chance well, the, thanks to the preclinical trials that are done on rats Peter and in. mice yeah. and monkeys, and I'm all for it. We humans are animals. To suggest there's some great gulf between us and other animals is nonsense. We are part of the animal kingdom, and other animals have sentience, they can feel pain and suffering, they have basic emotions, they have cognizance. There are hundreds of scientists from top universities around the world who say that the animal model is flawed. Also, economically more expensive. And our taxes are actually paying for failures. Nine out of ten drugs that are tested on animals successfully fail in humans. Without being able to um, experiment on monkeys, I would not have been able to find the part of the brain that we have found that when we stimulate it, we can reduce um, many of the symptoms of Parkinson's disease. In days past, we were doing experiments on human beings at the lower rungs of society. In days to come, I think we will also see animal exp experimentation as a barbaric idea. The suffering of others is somehow less important than the suffering of me or those I care about or others. Suffering is suffering. It doesn't matter who is suffering. We have a duty not to impose it on anyone. This is a story about a boy and his dog, Romeo. The two were inseparable for years. Best friends, you might say. One day, Romeo didn't come home when he was called. No matter how hard he searched, Romeo was nowhere to be found. It seemed hopeless. Little by little, the boy and his family learned about pet theft through books and news. Class B breeders were notorious for stealing pets to sell to animal research laboratories. The boy couldn't bear the thought of his Romeo living in these conditions, so he and his family created an ALF group. The Animal Liberation Front is an international, leaderless resistance that engages in illegal direct action in the pursuit of animal rights, such as removing animals from labs and farms or destroying facilities and arranging safe houses and veterinary care. The ALF prepared to take action. Through interviews with Class B breeders and researching local lab research protocols and surveillance, they figured out a plan to rescue Romeo and other animals. 